Hey, 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 Mark Willie, it's BS Friday. Hey, how about a double thumbs up, Dave? <laughs> I love it. How are you, buddy? I'm, I'm, I'm good. Uh, I have something to express my excitement this morning. Oh, yeah? Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Man. Copper mug. Yeah. Where's your coffee, Dave? I got my coffee right here, my friend. All right. I am I am all set. I got my coffee. You know, I, I I've been I've been slacking on my root beer. Uh, but uh, that will come that will come back. I, I shouldn't be drinking coffee still at eleven AM, Mark. Uh I don't I don't know. I think I drink coffee up till three. I think that's my limit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well listen, let's hop into it, man. We we got a big, big show today. Yeah, today we're going to be talking about gutters and 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 the need to 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 use them in case it rains. I, yeah, yeah, definitely about gutters. Definitely about gutters. So listen, man, how how do, how do we want to start off today? You you tell me what we should start with. I mean, we 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 have a special guest that's going to be joining us. We're going to talk about the top ten. Go ahead, say it. So, 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 so the, the, the top 10 uh, ways to build a passive house easier and cheaper. And, and what people don't realize is we actually talk when we're not on the show. And uh, after, after last Friday's show, Jennifer and Dave and I, uh, we talked and, and then we talked again. And uh, sometimes we listened and uh, we, we all had a shared idea of a top 10. It was it was unanimous, and, and each one of us had come to that at different points prior. And uh, I wanted to hold off until the tenth show to roll out the top ten, and uh, I marinated on it for about five <laughs> seconds. And uh, and here we are. We're doing top ten with one of my favorite subjects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, well, you know what. Passive house is uh, up and rising, and people are starting to pay attention, and people are curious about what it's like to uh, live in a passive home, which really, to me, means living healthy. That's which really, really what to me goes. means comfortable, Dave. So if yeah. you're healthy and I'm comfortable, I know I love it. We're, then we're in heaven. We're in yeah, heaven. We are, aren't we? Don't make me bring out my cloud face because <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. All right. So listen, should we should we should we bring this special person on Prudence? I think uh I think the drum roll is set. Uh oh, let's do it. I don't have so we're gonna have to just do it this way. Give me a, all right. Bam! Prudence, let me put you in the middle. Watch this, Mark Magic. <laughs> hey, good morning, guys. Good morning, Prudence. How Top are you? Good morning to you, Miss California. I'm, I'm doing great. I got my my big old mug of coffee, which yeah. will get refilled, and I'll probably be drinking it until 6 p.m. Right. And yeah. it's iced coffee because it's getting to be like up over a hundred here. It's a little crazy. Hundred degrees. So yeah. when you drink coffee, is it is it black or do you add cream and sugar? Uh Yesterday in the afternoon, I actually added um, butterscotch liqueur. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know. But most of the time in the morning, it's just black with ice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, have a, I have a tip for the people that drink uh, iced coffee and, and like cream. Uh, I take my ice cube trays, the, the, little, the little small guys, and I fill them with uh, half and half. There you go. That's smart. That's yeah, really yeah, smart. Man. Like so, like sugar cubes, uh, like like sugar cubes only uh, cream cubes. <laughs> <laughs> love it, I love it, I love it. Well, you know what, Prudence, uh, this is awesome that you're joining us today. But I I I don't know, Mark. Who is Prudence? Do we even know who Prudence is? You you, you know, Dave, I, I I wanted to do the intro, and and Prudence and I have talked uh, about the intro for today. And uh, I, I want to pull the plug on the whole thing. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna step back and uh, find a friend that could do a better job, if that's all right. I, I, I think we can do that. Should we do that? Yeah, I think, uh, I think Prudence doesn't know this person, but um, it's a good time to get to meet. Right on. 
Michael and Gui, how are you? Michael, what's going on? How Good are morning. You? Good. Good. I'm not used to seeing you this time of day. I know it's a little early, a little yeah. early, but uh, but thanks, guys. It's uh, it's good to be on to uh, introduce Prudence. You want nice. me to just jump right in? I want to I want to intro who you are, Michael. Cool. Um, a lot of people don't realize you're the premier uh, gutter installer on the East Coast. Um, very important. I, I mean that in a technical way. He knows how to keep water away from buildings. Um, so we had Michael on for a brief second a few weeks ago, celebrating the one-year anniversary of Passive House Accelerator. And uh, awesome. I wish we can use our, our Passive House crystal ball to see what the world's going to look like nine years from now when we celebrate the 10th anniversary. As do I. Uh, it's, 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 uh, it's my perspective, Michael, that in 10 years you could close the accelerator because we will have completed this mighty task. Mm -hmm. um, Man, I hope so. I really yeah. hope so. So uh, I, I, my, I just made the hair on my own arms stand up saying that. And um, I'm thrilled to have you, Michael. Uh, and uh, I think you should take it away before I bumble any further. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. I appreciate it. So, um, so Prudence, uh, I, I really have enjoyed to get to know Prudence on the oh, path. Hmm? Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, good, good. good. Uh, so I, I've uh, I've really enjoyed getting to know Prudence on the Passive House Accelerator. Uh, it's it's been just a lot of fun, um, and she has a pretty varied and encompassing skill set, um, which is important in our ever connected world. Um, her credentials include include a certified Passive House consultant. Lead AP BDC certified uh, energy analyst, hydrothermic analyst, hers Greenpoint and lead for Homes Raider. Um, but what makes Prudence a leader isn't just her impressive bio and her accomplishments, but her ability and willingness to share everything she knows around her. Um, having said that, she has a really, really impressive bio. Uh, at Morrison Hirschfield, she's a senior member of the building performance analysis team, serving as the firm's uh, passive house practice lead for both Canada and the US. She also teaches certified passive house consultant training in North America, and she's trained over 600 design and construction professionals to date, which, which is just huge. Uh, she was a founding member and interim president of Passive House California. She's also a founding member of the FIAS Technical Committee. So I'm pretty excited to uh, hear, hear today's session as much as everybody else. Um, there's a lot to learn, especially from someone who has consulted on more than 40 Passive House projects across seven different climate zones, has experience with unique Passive House typologies such as curtain wall tower, historic masonry retrofit, medical facilities, labs, schools, senior housing. So uh, it's nice to have it all in one. And uh, I really, really, uh, uh, Dave and Mark, I appreciate the uh, opportunity to introduce her. It'll, it'll be a fun show. I look forward to uh, having my coffee and enjoying. Well, the show, the show is actually over, Michael. You took, you took the whole hour. <laughs> Too much time. Too much hey, you time. You know what? We, Sorry, we, we, I could have gone on. I, well, I know, but you forgot, you know, Prudence also was a psychedelic DJ back in the day. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I think that, that I think the short introduction for me is in all caps spaz. That <laughs> that pretty much encompasses it all. Well, you know what, Prudence, you just inspired me. I can make that all caps spaz happen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it would be fun to see when you when you when you give all the little uh, acronyms after your name, if you include the SPAZ, because then we're going to have people around the industry saying, well, how do I get certified? To be a fan? <laughs> I, I want that. I want that. <laughs> oh, man. Well, it just it just takes a lot of passion and uh, excitement about being alive and the willingness to admit that you don't know everything, but you want to find out. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Said, said the squirrel next to the oak tree. Yeah. You know, and honestly, that's, I mean, that that's the attitude that's brought me to where I am and all those project typologies that Michael had mentioned. Nobody, nobody had done those, or at least nobody that I knew of in the U S had done those when I started working on them. It's like, all right, well, let's just figure it out. And, uh, oh man, it's been uh, it's been challenging in some ways. I've had a lot of sleepless nights and 
a lot of uh, lessons learned in terms of um, P H U C K ups. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I don't understand. <laughs> can, can you elaborate on that for me? Best way to learn. Yeah, yeah. yeah fuck ups, you know. That, there, she there's been. She there's got that term from fuck-ups. climate zone number eight. <laughs> love it, love it. Well, I tell you what, Michael. Uh, I know we're going to have you uh, on the show here in not too long as well. Um, cool. We really appreciate you stopping by, and uh, we're gonna. We're going to leave it to wonder how important you really, really are in this world. Uh, and I think it's going to be fun leading up to our next show uh, that, well, it's not the next one, but when we have you coming up, uh, it'll be great. So cool. why don't we, why don't we hop into the uh, top 10? Right good. on. Sound good. Michael, yeah. we'll be catching Michael. up. Thanks again for jumping in this morning. And uh, I can't wait to, can't wait to have you on the show. Sounds good. Thanks guys. Thanks Bye. Michael. All right. We are back at it. Mark's got his coffee. Prudence uh, has her psychedelic music playing, I'm sure, in the background somewhere. And uh, we are going to now get into top 10 ways to make Passive House easier and cheaper with the one and only Prudence. Prudence, what I love so much about you. What's that? You're just fun. You know, you're just you're just not all about the data and the science like Oh that's no, not, I am. I am about the oh, data know, and the science. But about it. I, yeah, that's not that's not all there is to life. So I, I <laughs> love it. I love it. So Mark, what do you say? Why don't you why don't you kick us off? I think uh I th- I think everyone is in anticipation, Prudence. So uh be yourself, dive Let's in do it. and take us on the journey of uh easier and cheaper, wonderful and comfortable, healthy and happy passive house. All right. Let's do it. Number okay. One. So number one, big picture view, passive house. It's, it's just four buckets guys. So imagine yourself, uh, balancing on your shoulders, four buckets, right? You're walking down a plank. Now, maybe it's not that complicated, but essentially we have two loss buckets and two gain buckets. The loss buckets are losses through our envelope. So all six sides, everything that's going on on the six sides of the building and losses through uh, ventilation. That could be intentional ventilation that we're bringing in to breathe or leakage through the envelope of our building. So those are our two loss buckets. And then on the other side, we have two gain buckets. We're not ready for the air sealing yet. We're getting there. The two gain buckets are internal gains. So those are the gains from all the waste heat in the building, uh, the heat that your dog puts off or that you put off when you're talking and waving your hands around. And uh, and the other gains are solar gains coming in through the windows. So it's just a balancing act with all four of those buckets. All right, now we're ready for number two. Oh, all right, so. Let me go oh. back here, there. <laughs> All right, so um, the ingredients of the recipe are important. And uh, the ingredients of the recipe for Passive House are air sealing, which is one of the the items that we saw before. There we go. So in some climates, you actually don't even need to do a lot of extra insulation beyond code, Uh, like California, where I'm sitting now. Um, And in some uh, building typologies, you really just need to focus on the air sealing and providing uh, the insulation uh, that's close to code with a little bit on the exterior to make sure we get rid of thermal bridges. That'll that'll get you there. Uh, so air sealing is an art form. It's almost like a drywall mudding, right? So yeah. there's some there's some finesse to it, but when you get into it, oh man, it's satisfying. It's really satisfying, and it makes a huge difference in the performance of these buildings. So the second part of the recipe is better windows and smart shading. And when I say better windows, I mean that we're not doing single pane. We're doing at least double pane, depending on our climate zone, and sometimes triple pane. And that also depends on the size of the building. The smaller the building and the more surface area we've got, that means we have uh, more gains relative or more losses relative to the gains that are happening inside the building. So 
with smaller buildings like a single family home in cooler or temperate climates, we end up with triple pane. But if we're dealing with a big building that has less surface area to its internal floor area and volume, then sometimes we, we only need to do double pane windows because we have more gains relative to the losses. So window performance uh, in terms of U value, um, and that's frames and glazing. So we like to do thermally broken frames if we can and uh, glazing with uh, good U values, double or triple pane, but the solar heat gain coefficient is also really important. Um, and that goes hand in hand with smart shading. So depending on the climate you're in and what kind of shading you have around you, uh, the name of the game is to let the sun come in during the colder times of year so we get some free heat. Those windows are essentially acting like our mechanical system in a passive way. And then during the hot part of the year, when we are in cooling mode, we want to keep that solar gain out as much as we can. So we're using less fossil fuels to cool the building. Uh, and that can happen through, through the solar heat gain coefficient on the glazing. Also, uh, depending on where you put the window uh, relative to the, the edge of the cladding, you can get some shading there. And then also doing balconies um, or window overhangs, trees out in the yard, fences, etc. So that's an important part of keeping that balance is the, the smart windows and, and the shading. And then the next part of the recipe is energy recovery ventilation. So we need to breathe air. And that's part of being healthy human beings, especially now in our in our COVID era, right? Um, we want that air to be nice and clean and filtered. And when we're in an airtight building and the air that's coming in is being controlled, going through some nice MERV 13 filters, um, there's, a, there's a little more uh, ability to relax. Um, so what's happening with energy recovery ventilation is all of the stale air uh, that we are making uh, primarily in our kitchens or our bathrooms, or if we've got some kind of a, a closet where we're keeping supplies that are um, having uh, chemicals in them, like a janitorial closet, if we're talking about bigger buildings, we're gonna be exhausting air from those places where, where we've got um, particulate, um, or any kind of stale, dirty, damp air. And through that exhaust, uh, we can recover the energy, right? There's waste heat in there and there's humidity in there as well. With energy recovery ventilation, we're recovering both. We're recovering the humidity and the energy, uh, the heat. Um, with heat recovery ventilation, we're not recovering the humidity, just the heat. Um, and depending on the climate you're in, one or the other of those is going to be more appropriate. Most climates, the energy recovery ventilator is more appropriate. Um, and how we know which is more appropriate is by thinking about what kind of relative humidity do we want in the building? Well, we want it to be somewhere between 40 and 60 percent. That's comfortable for human beings. What's the relative humidity outside? Is it between 40 and 60 percent? If it is, cool, you can have a heat recovery ventilator. If at any point during the year it's not in that sweet spot that we want it to be in the building, then an energy recovery ventilator is going to do a better job for us. So what happens is the outgoing air passes through a core and the humidity and the heat, if we're doing an energy recovery ventilator, is essentially transferred uh, through an enthalpy wheel. It's just a wheel that's got some fabric on it and the incoming airstream picks up the humidity and the heat. So it gets tempered. We're not wasting that energy before we push that dirty air out. We're transferring that energy into the incoming airstream. And what ends up happening, and this is really amazing to me, is that those ventilators, the motors, they're really efficient motors, they actually they save nine to 13 times the amount of energy that they use in running the fan. So they're, they're really um, stacked functions 
really fantastic thing to have in buildings, even if it's not a passive house. They're they're really a fantastic measure to put in for healthy air um, and good recovery of energy and ventilation. So we're just not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. The next part of the recipe is efficient lighting appliances and systems. So in passive house, uh, you know, we're doing pretty much 100% LEDs. Um, I think it's really cool nowadays, you can get those uh, those super efficient bulbs that actually look like Edison bulbs. Have you seen those guys? They're, they're pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so LEDs keep getting better and better. There's no excuse anymore not to do 100% LEDs. And when we're getting into bigger buildings, we're gonna do the smart things like uh, occupancy sensors and daylight sensors so the lights are not on all the time. And then with our appliances, it's Energy Star, right? We all know Energy Star, that's, that's where we're starting. And, uh, and then when it comes to our systems, we wanna use systems that produce more than they require to operate. So when we talk about that balance between energy intake for operation and the energy that's coming out of it for heating or cooling, we refer to that balance as coefficient of performance, right? And so we want heat pumps. Heat pumps are great for a passive house. In some climates, they don't work so great, super cold climates, but there's ways to get around it. But just remember heat pumps, high coefficient of performance. That's the way to go. All right. So. Holy cow. Yeah. I, I have a feeling. Uh, that's the recipe. I have a feeling this recipe for the, the HRVs uh, of, of the efficiency that they're doing, that uh, we could we could get these engineers to work with uh, uh, the House and Senate and, and get them to, uh, to be more efficient and, and, and do more wondrous acts with, uh, with, uh, with less. Right? <laughs> I don't know if that's in their vocabulary, efficiency. Oh my goodness. Uh, Prudence, that was very down to earth. It, yeah. it, I would almost venture to say that, that you've expressed uh, this, this part of the talk before. It was, it was pretty well laid out. <laughs> yeah, I, I've talked about this a few times over the last decade or so. Yeah. Well, you know what's fun? You can tell that you enjoy talking about it. And when you're talking about it, it's almost as if you're feeling it as you're talking about it and walking, like you're visually walking yourself through your mind, everything that you've been doing over the last, you know, several years with, with the design and understanding the work. I mean, air sealing, you know, like you said, it's, it's, it's like artwork you know, no different than a spackler, a sheetrock person. Uh, and I think that's so true, right? I mean, there's a lot of attention to detail. It may not be the funnest work, as I think we said one show before, but I don't know. I think it's, I think it's pretty it's fun, actually. And, you know, I mean, I think carpentry is a noble profession. Jesus was a carpenter, man, right? Yeah, yeah. But I got to say, like, my, uh, my, my, husband and I, we decided to uh, to try to get off grid and, and go camp out on a gravel bar in Alaska with, with satellite internet and just like have, have a life of uh, adventure for a year. And we got this truck camper and we had decided we we're going to try to retrofit this truck camper to Passive House. And it was my job to do the air sealing. And I got in there and I, it was like meditative doing that taping. It is, you can you can really find some satisfaction in that. I, well, I love it. I, I don't know. Me personally, I, I can't sit still for a second. <laughs> I don't know if I could. I, meditation would probably kill me. <laughs> yeah, it would. It would kill your ego. That's the reason <laughs> to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how about uh, I, I got we have two uh, comments that I want to take a look at here real quick while, before we move on. So why don't we Great. jump in? You guys good with that? We'll, yeah, let's do it. Um, Tom Reddy said, when thinking about the build cycle, it seems the passive home building concept would best fit in the design architect phase. Is this true or can it be adopted during the construction or after completion? Uh, that's hilarious. Uh, if, you want, if you want a passive house after you finish the building, uh, Tom is setting us up for that. Uh, he, he, he knows darn well. Uh, <laughs> it, you set up the team in the beginning, right? Um, 
you don't you don't show up at a restaurant and expect the your your cuisine to be a fine Italian dish if you're at a Chinese restaurant. It's not going to happen. You have to plan the ingredients. You have to know that the sous chef and the supplier and the chef and the waiter and everyone from the table to the back of the house is on board. That's my that's my take. We're we're making a meal together, and we want to enjoy it. And you want someone at the end of that meal to say. Can I have another helping, and can you give me that recipe, so we can make that meal again? And when we make that meal again, I hope we're going to make it a little better because we learned something the first time. That's my take on passive house. I could not agree more. And I mean, that's the thing is you you don't want it to be Hell's Kitchen in that kitchen. You want it to be fun. You want it to be like uh, singing songs with the Swedish chef from the Muppets. You know? Yeah. You, you want to have uh, juggling going back and forth between team members where everyone is completely in sync. They know the roadmap. They know what's coming next. They're like, okay, we, we already know what's five steps ahead of this and we're all lined up so that it's just, it's just Let's going bring on and Bobby fun. Flay, right? Let's bring on Bobby Flay, not Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, to, to add to Tom, though, uh, we have a, we have an abundance of homes in this country. You can still incorporate some of these techniques to make your home better. Though. Is that accurate? absolutely? That is absolutely. Accurate. We're not tearing down every house and rebuilding them. You it's know, not no. your construction. Yeah, yeah. existing right. buildings have a, a tremendous amount of embodied carbon, and and passive house is not elusive to embodied carbon. They probably put it on the map, in my opinion. So when you take that structure and, you know, there's shortcuts to it by, by insulating the exterior, but uh, there's, there's many things you could do to an existing building to tailor it to be more comfortable. It's not about new construction. It's about approaches and systematic uh, cooperation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. I, I absolutely agree with that. And uh, actually, one of the things that we've been thinking about um, uh, is coming up with a really easy approach to retrofitting all of the existing building stock where uh, we don't, there's not as many requirements. In other words, instead of having the way that Passive House works right now is we have we have different criteria that we need to meet. Um, and that uh, guides the direction that you go in terms of how much insulation you put on, what window performance, uh, the efficiency of the ERV, all of that stuff. But if we look at the existing building stock and we just say, all right, bottom line, what do we want to do? Well, we want to reduce operational carbon emissions. So what's the indicator that's going to tell us how well we're doing? Well, in the passive house world, it's called source energy. Source energy is essentially your site energy, everything you're using on site multiplied by a, a fuel factor for whether you're using natural gas or electricity mix from the grid. And if for retrofits, we can just have that bottom line number of, okay, you get to this source energy, we don't care how you get there, then you know, that, that gives a lot of flexibility for people. And then you give them the toolbox. Here's all the passive house approaches that you can use. Do what you can do on your building. Get to this source energy requirement. And I think there can be a lot of innovation that happens that way without a lot of restriction. It's not, it's, it, 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 it's not, it's not hard. It's hard work. It's not hard. Got it. Got yeah. it. All right, let's take another question. And we've, we're only on number one, so we got to get to the other nine. All right. The first uh, Lumen Kosh house, if I said that right, used all passive house tips, geothermal, super tight, HRV, awning, and window design for passive heating, shading, plus five kilowatts solar. Costs the grid connection fee per month. Best part is it looks like every other home in the neighborhood. They don't have to be out of place. Um, and who was that, Derek Coburn? Yeah, that's Derek. Derek. Yeah, that's good that. buddy. Why his name's not showing up on the feed here? He 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 uh, he lives in China and he probably wants to uh, have his M M M anonymity or however you say that. He's brilliant electronics uh, patent manufacturing guru guy. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. A, that's exactly right, Derek. Passive houses don't have to look weird. They don't have to be boxes with with only a few windows. They can look like every other house. Yeah. But you can make them as weird as you want. The house doesn't <laughs> care how it looks. It matters how it performs, people. 
It yeah, does. that's right. All right, everybody, listen, if you're just joining us, we are live on LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook. Please hit that like and share button or clap button or any of that stuff. We're trying to grow a uh, passive house and how we build things. And we're going to change how we build by using offsite and using passive house knowledge and building science knowledge. Uh, and that's what's so great about what we're doing here. So, but that knowledge is only good if we can get it out to the masses. So please like and share. Um, let's do a couple quick shout outs just so we can catch up on a few things. Uh, oh, Etienne, hey buddy. Congratulations on the first 100 subscribers we did. We hit 100 subscribers on YouTube, Mark. We just got our channel up and running. So nice. please like and uh, go to that YouTube channel and subscribe. That would be great. Leave yeah, it to and Etienne. Leave it to Etienne to say that one of the nicest guys in the business, uh, and he he shares he shares his network, he shares everything, um, and 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 Shane McNutt, Dave, he shares gifts to you and I, right? Yeah, yeah, he does, he does. I got my I got my glass here. So hey, Shane, thank you so much. Um, I know I owe you a uh, a response to some things you sent me, so I will get to that this afternoon. We got Sean, good uh, looking, good gents. Well, that was before you were on Prudence, so we'll, I'm sure he would modify that in a heartbeat. So that's before we had John. Jerry McCullough, good morning from Pittsburgh. Hey, Jerry, thanks for joining us this morning. Anthony Gooday, lead AP. Right. Hey, Anthony. Uh, one of our favorites, Jerry McCahey. Hey, Jerry, good morning. Good to see you. We've already had Tom Reddy up. There's a few users on here that their names aren't transferring over on the uh, for whatever reason. Kind of, kind of like the last gentleman I mentioned. Uh, but who is it in China? Derek Calburn. It shows up on LinkedIn, but it's not showing up here. Top of the morning to you, Jerry. I hope all of your uh, clients and future clients uh, spend a few minutes catching catching things up on what uh, Prudence is sharing today. And what a lot of people don't realize is uh, is back in Ireland, Jerry and uh, and Tomas O'Leary are the two people responsible for the net zero building code over there. So he's not just changing the way carpenters and builders work in the States. He's done it for 30 years in, in Ireland. So hats off to you, Jerry. Thumbs up. Thanks, All right. Jerry. Let's, let's hop back into this. People are here to learn. So let's, let's, uh, let's give them something to chew on. What do you think, Prudence? Yeah, let's do it. Number two, know the ingredients of the recipe. We already did that. Yep. Number three. All road right. Road critical path, roadmap. So, so this is what we were talking about uh, in, in the kitchen, right? If we want to have a good time cooking up this meal, cooking up this recipe, uh, having a roadmap and knowing what that is before we get started is critical. And there's um, there's some really important pinch points. And one of the first pinch points is very beginning of the project you got your team like you gotta you gotta all know you gotta start rowing in the same direction at the very beginning and go through what that critical path is so that that's pinch point number one pinch point number two is figuring out what your recipe is going to be what what exactly are we going to use for the ingredients and uh that takes some energy modeling. So doing that right out of the gate so that we can tell which paths are possible to take to get us to Passive House and then costing some of those paths to figure out, okay, what's the most affordable approach? That that will get everyone in line with our basis of design. And that basis of design might change a little bit, but that's, that's pinch point number two, right? If we don't do early modeling, then there's a lot of questions and decisions that we can't make with informed knowledge and data. Ah. And then moving on in to design development, pinch point number three is when we start getting all of the specifications in line. We start choosing actual products and we start getting towards um, you know, construction drawings, we're, we're narrowing it down. Um, there needs to be really good communication during that time period uh, between the designers and uh, the constructors so that we know what's going on. Um, and then pinch point number three is when the bids start coming in, right? So we've got our trades. The trades are maybe they haven't been with us yet, but they're they're coming in. Uh, ideally, we get them excited about Passive House. That's a really good way to do it. So they understand the impact of their air sealing and their choices that they're making. 
And then when those bids start coming in, of course, our trades, they want to save us money. They want to do it smarter. They're excited. And sometimes some of those bids that come in that have some value engineering, right? It's like, eh, okay, you, you, you maybe don't understand exactly how it works with Passive House, but some of those things are like a hard stop. It's like, no, nope, you can't go beyond this performance because then we're not making it anymore. So that's a pinch point that I've seen commonly missed is when those bids start coming in, there's not a Passive House person that's really reviewing them to make sure that, that we're moving ahead, all rowing in the same direction and on track. And then as we start to get into actual construction, um, pinch point number three is the communication between our whole design team. So mechanical designer, architectural designer, um, all the trades, and really having everyone sitting together in a room and making sure that we know what's going to happen during construction what was intended in the in the detailing in the architectural details and sometimes there's a gap especially on the bigger projects not talking single family now but when we're talking bigger projects there's a gap between the architectural details and the shop drawings right and oftentimes the pricing and what the trades are coming back with that's going to be based on shop drawings but if we don't have them yet how do they know that their pricing is right and they're not going to lose their shirt so having not only a pre-construction meeting where we all start to get on the same page with what's going to happen through the construction process and how we're going to verify everything how we're going to work together but then after that having an integrated shop drawing session before any shop drawings are drawn where all of the trades can sit together and we can go through the building from bottom, from subgrade, all the way up the vertical wall, all the way to the roof and understand which trades are doing what, how our air barrier is going to be continuous, mm -hmm. where all of the little tiny things that like no one owns it yet, who's going to do it, right? So that we, we get it all hammered out and in that meeting, we also go through a list that was made by our mechanical designer of all of our penetrations, a penetration schedule, right? And if we know all of those holes through the building and we can talk about the trades, the construction manager, everyone, how we're going to seal them, there's only going to be a few different kinds, right? They're going to repeat. If we know how we're going to seal them, then as we move towards mock-up, we're all, it just makes it so streamlined and it's fun because we're all sitting in one room together and we're coming up with solutions. We're in that kitchen. We're starting to toss ideas back and forth. What if we do this? What if we do this? And moving, moving towards sometimes really innovative solutions that right. the architect never would have thought of. And I certainly never would have thought of, but you know, we've got our, we've got our trades and our construction managers that are like, man, they're all MacGyvers. They're all thinking about like the smartest, funnest, easiest way to do it. That's going to be replicable, easy to quality assure. And they're like, well, what if we do this? If we've got the model open, can plug it in, see how it works. So you're, you're saying we just need to think about these things up front. It sounds a little bit like building. Like you got to you got to plan it out up front and think it through out front and then have a game plan to make it all happen. I mean, that's right. What you're saying is, are you kidding me? We can't just do change orders and rip down walls and re rebuild things five times on site. I mean, you can, wow. but that's, that's the way to make passive house harder and more expensive. Yeah. And I know because I've done it that way and it's yeah. not fun. It is oh. not fun at all. <laughs> it's not fun if you're not even doing passive house. <laughs> yeah. It's, so funny so, term. <laughs> it's the funniest term ever uh, when people do it that way because oftentimes, Dave, it's referred to as design build, right? When we figure it out and we and we expand on it throughout. But it, it should never be called design build because you should design and then build. And, and the stuff you were talking about just now, uh, to dial it down a little smaller, Prudence, mm -hmm. is – of course we have the envelope, right? And, and, and the carpenters and the GC work heavily on that. And the electrician and the plumber and the mechanical contractor each have multiple penetrations and, and the windows are penetrations, right? The doors are penetrations. 
And so when you think of those square inches added up, right? Uh, I was I was used to use the analogy, the square inches of all the penetrations added up are about the size of your front door. So when you finish your home, do you leave the front door open or do you put one on? So yep. I tend to think you put one on. Uh, if you live in Alaska, you might have a bear sleeping on your floor uh, <laughs> or you might be sleeping inside the bear. So uh, your, your choice. Um, so I think that's a step. The other part, as you said, getting them together early and having that meeting. And it occurred to me, workshops. Yeah. We need to have workshops and a conversation that we've had before is what's missing is you might have the shop drawings and you might be sitting with the architect and the energy model and the design team, but without a mock-up that shows this is our thermally broken header. This is the window. This is the rain screen. This is the cladding. This is the membrane. This is where it is. It is nine to 11 layers of a buffet. And that's before you even get to lunch. So when all that goes together, if there's a mock-up, now you can actually price it. That's and, right. And, and, and you don't get someone saying, well, you know, we use two by sixes and R21 bat and it's worked just fine. Great. Well, back to the drawing, right? Um, let's let's take that hard-earned knowledge of putting 21 bat in the wall and let's and let's take it one step further and what's going behind it after it and who is responsible and how it's getting done. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. And then, you know, once you've got a mock-up, actually been able to to accept, okay, maybe that mock-up's not going to be perfect, but that's where everyone is going to refine and learn. And you get you get everyone in the process in there, right? It's not just for the trades to look at the mock-up and learn like what they're supposed to do, but it's for the the construction manager or the GC. Um, to understand the phasing of everything also and how that's going to be managed. And then for the architect to come back and look at like how this stuff is actually going together in the field and think about where their drawing started and where it ended up, because then that knowledge can inform their next project. And then the architectural detail drawings and the shop drawings, they start to become closer and closer. And we don't get that gap between well, this is what's on paper, but that that's nothing I can price, right? We want those two things to start coming together. And exactly what you're saying is right, Mark. We just need to really successfully do, and it's not just Passive House, guys. It's, it's low carbon buildings. That's really what we're talking about here. Passive House is just, it's like a nice toolkit that's a stepping stone that leads us off in that direction. It is a shift. It's a paradigm shift in the industry to collaborating and problem solving together earlier. And the more we can do that, the more streamlined the process is going to get, the more fun we're going to have, the more efficient and cheaper it's going to get. And when I say cheaper, I'm not just talking about we've got really innovative, low cost solutions that are coming to us from the trades and informing the design, but I'm also talking about cheaper in terms of not having to do rework later because we didn't figure it out to begin with, not having to do change orders. When we're talking about these big projects, any holdup in the construction schedule, it costs, it really, really costs. And so that that's what I mean by cheaper. We save on, we save on design soft costs and we, we also save on holding costs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, so, it makes sense to, to plan it and design it up front uh, 100%. Um, what do you, you, did I step on you, Mark? No, no. Uh, we, both, we all have so much to add. It shows, it shows how needed this topic is. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling an audible here on, on everyone. Uh, we're, we're always super aware of time, and we're always super aware of detail. And so the audible is... We know we can't effectively cover these top 10 steps uh, it, 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 in, in detail. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, Prudence, we need you back uh, <laughs> because uh, – and we would love to have you back, right? So uh, there's a lot of engagement happening yeah. right now online with the people that are following, how you're laying this out. 
and um, it it wouldn't be of service to to them, and it wouldn't be in service to your top ten to to skip over it. So I think I think we get through uh, maybe a, another part, and mm -hmm. uh, and then and then we have a laugh and hear from our guests, and and then we have you back. That sounds good to me. Yeah, yeah. and uh, if I could, I would like to. Um, just as a teaser for what would be upcoming uh, for the next one, we're going to jump ahead to item number seven. But let's let's hear from what people are saying online yeah, first. Let's do one thing because we skip. We're doing a top ten, and you went straight into four and five. So let's just, you know, on our top ten living approach. I just want to I just want to make sure we touch base on everything that we went over, so people know it when they research. So we talked about the ingredients, right? Number two, we talked about the pH critical path. Yep. Then we then you went in. You talked about the architectural design, and my favorite part: checklist. Let's all get together and work through the checklist. Make sure we're not missing anything. Then you went into the number five MEP design checklist, which was perfect. You know, I actually haven't I haven't um, touched too much on the architectural the MEP design checklist, but those don't take too long. Uh, the only thing to really say there is there are items those folks need to know right out of the gate to make it an easy process. And I agree with you 100% checklists. They make everyone's life easier. 100%, 100%. So, and then number six, we didn't, uh, we got into a little bit, we haven't got into the certification, but we're going to jump to number seven is what you want to do. Yep. Awesome. Let's Perfect. go. Number so, seven, parametric modeling. All right. So if you can uh, put up there the screen share that I had shared with you before. All right. I, hopefully all of you guys can see this. So it might look a little bit fancy, but essentially what we're seeing are in early schematic design for uh, a, a large tower project. This is every single path that's available that can get us close to passive house, right? And so by doing this early in design, we can essentially peg, we can say, all right, well, here's what's gonna get us to the, the source energy limit or primary energy limit. And it just eliminates all the cases that don't make it. And then if I want to say, okay, well, I want the highest window to wall ratio that I can get, because that's what my developer wants. So I only want those that have 45% window to wall ratio. And then I see, uh, I'm going to peg this one too because we want our annual heating demand to be a little bit lower here. So this is actually a live data set. The computer has done the heavy lifting for me and run thousands. There were 4,500 cases run before I got to the ones that we're looking at here. Um, so any of these uh, axes can be customized, right? And so if at the beginning of a project, we already know all of the paths that are possible, we can choose the ones that seem to make the most sense in terms of the project's goals and that are gonna probably be the most affordable and understand um, at least preliminary comparative pricing of a couple of different paths. Uh, so it takes out so much of the guesswork and a lot of time um, and wasted head scratching like, hmm, is this going to work? Is this going to work? What happens if we if we change our heat recovery ventilator or what happens if we change the solar heat gain or the window U value? So say we only want to have window U values at point two. Well, hey, look, we've only got two pathways that are going to get us to Passive House. We don't need to wonder if there are any other ways to do it. The computer has done the heavy lifting for us. So this is really a game changer. And uh, we've been using this on all of our projects uh, to, to essentially eliminate risk. This eliminates risk on the, on the part of the, the developer uh, or the owner um, because they can see all of the paths laid out ahead of them. It eliminates risk in terms of additional soft costs for design time. So we're finding that this is this is really the way forward, we feel, for, um, for low carbon building design. So we wow. call that the SPAZ example. <laughs> yeah, SPAZ, right, exactly. SPAZ, we got it. We got it. Love it. All right. Perfect. So uh, can we move on to number eight? Are you, are we ready? No, to no, no. We, we, we'll get, it's too detailed because we just touched on seven and, and we skipped on six. I think we have to do that next time. Uh, 
because it's got to be a deeper dive. Um, yeah. Dave, Dave always tells me to, to keep looking at my watch and Prudence, he's been so excited about what you've been sharing. He hasn't looked at his watch. So I'm the watch <laughs> keeper today. <laughs> well, I'm so happy to hear that. That's great. Do um, we have um do we have any questions from uh from folks online? We do, That's we do. Perfect. We're gonna start putting them up. Go ahead. How can we convince builders to try pH solutions? It felt like we were fighting against the HVAC guys when we were wanted geothermal. They tried hard to talk us out of it. Same for insulators. Who was that? It's not Sean. So Mark, I don't know your experience with this, but sometimes <laughs> it takes some arrows in the back, right? Sometimes you, when people are used to doing things a certain way, you got to show them. You got to build one and just do it and show them how it's done. And then, then they want to learn. Um, with the mechanical folks, education is really key. And still in the passive house world, there are not that many mechanical engineers that are really educated in it. So there's a real opportunity there. Um, and yeah, I would encourage people who are having a hard time trying to convince someone to reach out to your local Passive House community, either via LinkedIn or there are chapters all around the country um, where you can uh, reach into the community that's there and get resources and advice from the people that are in your region. In this era of COVID, well, we're all one big community online, right? So come to the Global Passive House Happy Hour uh, that's on Wednesdays. Talk to people there. Ask questions on LinkedIn. Um, there's definitely resources out there to find folks to uh, either work with or to help you with uh, discrete convincing strategies that are specific to your problem. That was there. Thank you for that question. I'm going to give props to Michael Ingui right there. Uh, he takes people outside of homes and, uh, and he, and, and he says, do you want to be in a quiet, comfortable home? He doesn't sell the energy efficiency. Uh, he, he knows that people want to be in a quiet, comfortable home. And so when you deal with geothermal, uh, that that's an added benefit of, uh, of easy comfort without gas, right? When you deal with insulation, it's just a way of reducing the discomfort and reducing the poison of the heat or the poison of the cold affecting your enjoyment of reading that book and sleeping uh, comfortably, right? Without everything else going on. So it's, it's really an experience game changer. So yeah, that's yeah. that simple. All right. Next question is from Audre Grubesic. Hey, Audre, thanks for joining us today. And thanks for uh, helping us promote this show this week. Love that you put it out there for us. So Audre uh, Grubesic, Modular Share Site out in uh, good old Denver, Colorado. I need an outline, so many things to remember and recall for the brilliance building, for the Thai brilliance building process. LOL. I well, will, uh, I, will, I, will, I will email you the top 10, Audrey. You're a good friend, and I'll send it over, and we'll talk later today. Yeah, 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 yeah. and Audrey, feel free to contact me on LinkedIn. Love it, love it. Next question, please. Not up, uh, not cheaper, but more economical. Hey, George, thanks for joining us today. Big supporter, love it. Thanks, George. Al, how you doing, Al? Thank you for joining us today. Th big thumbs up from Al. There's no, there's no one like Al. Al's, Al seen more and done more uh, in more continents than probably all of us combined. Much respect, my friend. Yeah, mm -hmm. great plane too. I'm ready to go. <laughs> All right, Joe Kanapaki. How are you, Joe? Always good to learn new recipes for success. Thank you, Prudence, Dave, and Mark. Thank you, Joe, for joining us today. Anthony Gooday. Now, this guy, this guy here, he, he he's 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 always involved, and I love it. The passive home approach very much keeps the end in mind versus restricting the means or adding a ton of constraints. Very refreshing. So uh, next week, we have a guest that uh, it's going to be a shortened show. And uh, uh, due to the holiday, it's going to be uh, Katie Kaluzny of Illinois Green Alliance. And she will be bringing forth uh, examples of what we just talked about. Um, the Green Build Home Tour uh, covers net zero homes, all electric homes, renewable based developments, uh, if I didn't say passive house, I'll say passive house again. 
Um, and of course, uh, green homes. Uh, so you can all have the bike racks and all that stuff. And um, then we're also going to touch on the new gravity conference coming up. And yep. uh, we, we invited you to come back, uh, Prudence, and, uh, and it seems like you accepted. Yeah, and, I accept. Uh, I'm, I'm also going to put you on the spot on one more thing. Uh, July 10th is a Friday. Mm -hmm. It is uh, 11 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Pacific. And uh, there's, there's someone by the name of Etienne. Etienne, Adam, yeah. yeah. Adam White and, and, and Sean of 475, and uh, the three of them all work in uh, vapor and air and membranes and tapes and liquid apply. They, they care. They're passionate. They're passionate about air sealing. They're pass uh, passionate about moisture management. Uh, so uh, did, uh, did Prudence pop out? Uh, I don't know. Paradise? What'd you do, Mark? It, it might have been. Uh, she only put two quarters in the meter. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure she'll pop back in here in a second. So, uh, Prudence, if you can hear us uh, on July 10th, uh, we need a referee for this battle royale. Uh, Dave and I, uh, we, could, we could probably handle uh, Sean and Adam. You're going to have to handle ATN. And... Um, <laughs> It, that, it, that's no easy task. I'm just going to tell you now. This, so, so to be clear, you need a wrangler? Yeah. You, well, well, I guess we're essentially the handlers, right? So this isn't a, this isn't a cage match, uh, but, it's, but it's also not a three-man tag. So, um, it, it, look, they're all wonderful people. Uh, confrontation is not what we're going for. Yeah. Uh, in, inspiration is what we're going for. Uh, challenging the status quo is what we're going for. So, uh, well, I I love smart vapor retarders and talking all about them, and I can certainly get into the weeds with those guys in a very fun way. So, uh, yeah, I th I think that would be great. You have a technical distinction besides spaz. You're also a hydro uh, hydrothermal analyst. Yeah, yeah. So, I uh, I love assessing mold risk. And condensation risk, it's really fun for me. So yeah, moisture dependent permeability, which is what these smart vapor retarders are are doing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, that's fun stuff to talk about and explain, right? Demystify for people how it's working. So, yeah. so, so, so let's challenge people. What's bigger, something to think about between now and the 10th, what's bigger, air or vapor? You mean size wise? Yeah, because if you're having a smart membrane, right, you might be letting something in and stopping something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a good question for people to munch on. Yeah, there if you that. have the right answer to it, you could join us on Passive House Accelerator next Wednesday and have a chance to win a T-shirt. Love it, love it. So let's give a couple more quick shout outs, Mark. We got Andrew Seely joining us. Uh, their names, for whatever reason, in the feed aren't popping up. It's just coming up blank. We got Rick Hawkins, and of course uh, George Ryman was uh, making some comments there. There we go, George. Not cheaper, but more economical. Love it. Right Love on. That. So, all right, everybody. I mean, this was great. Thank we, you guys so much. I had a lot of fun. Eventually, I think we call it the top five today. Part two <laughs> is is the is the top ten. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we? Uh, why don't we bring Michael's still sitting in the wings? Let's bring him in. Just say thank you for joining us. He never left us. Love it, Michael. Oh, I can't hear you. You're muted. Oh no, he pulled a Monty. I love doing that. Oh wow, <laughs> <laughs> this was great today, guys. I, I I couldn't leave. It was good. It's a good top ten. That's fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, love it. We love it. So, uh, Mark, you got any final words? Uh, I'm, 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 I'm thrilled that we actually only got to five. Uh, I think, I think it's important to, 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 uh, have people to take a deeper dive for some people, building science goes too far and, and, and they're ready for the one Oh one, the construction one Oh one and, uh, and jump on board because as we see 
we're all here to help and we're all here to make it easier. Again, it's, it's, it's not hard. It's just hard work. And, and secondly, for the other people, uh, uh, and the people that LinkedIn messages me daily, they want to dive deeper. And, and number seven that, that Pruin dove into, uh, not only does that take you deeper, but it also makes your life easier. It, it makes everything easier. It's literally a control panel. So all you have to do is fly the prop, the prop plane, right? You don't have to fly the 747. Um, Prudence does that daily. Michael does that daily. Uh, I'm just a BSer, so don't worry about me. And uh, I'm looking forward to next week, my friends. Yeah, I am. All right. well. A couple quick shout outs. Everyone. Everyone. We had a great show today, so I love it. Prudence. Hang tight, Michael. Hang tight. I'll come back to you in just a few. For everybody else, until one o'clock, until eleven o'clock next Friday. Have a wonderful week, and uh, make sure you fill it full of BS. We'll see you next time. Have a great week.